All right. So should I do the welcome back to the Royal uh, Path? Yes, you can. Anytime. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Royal Path. My name is Esther, and I am very honored to be guest hosting for Andrew while he is on his family leave. Mm -hmm. um, should, Father, should we give an update on them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, thanks be to God. Um, the baby, uh, baby Matrona is here. Every, she's healthy. Mama's healthy. Family's healthy. Uh, got to say, go and say prayers uh, over them. It was great because, um, gosh, we had like two babies born on the same day. Um, and also that's Papadia's birthday. It's my wife's birthday. So like it was a big round of birthdays on Tuesday. But um, yeah, glory to God. Uh, the baby, baby Matronas here and the Funk family are, is doing really well. So we're really happy and grateful. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Glory to God. Yeah, thank God. Thank God. Um, so I have a question, and I am definitely a different flavor of nerd than you guys. Well, hold on here. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Who are, are you? <laughs> you no, know, a different, you? different flavor. Well, no, no, no. I'm just not a uh, a comic book Marvel geek. No, I understand that, but I think the thing is, you have to understand that nobody knows who you are. Well, that's okay. Like I know who you are. Right. No, she, she okay, said her name. Okay, okay. She said her okay. name. No, no, no. I like to read books and I like to read a lot of fantasy and sometimes sci-fi and I've been a okay. big reader my whole life. So uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm a book nerd. I was, okay, just for background, Cyprian, I don't know if you, how much you know or anybody. I don't know. I don't know anything. So I'm following okay, along with the audience great. now. Great, great. <laughs> uh, just, I came from, I grew up in a, um, kind of a weird family honestly I'm growing up in a family very much like father is now having <laughs> I have I'm the second oldest of 10 kids and we were homeschooled k through 12 so very very conservative parents very sheltered upbringing and like I said homeschooled so I was just a stereotypical homeschool nerd read a bunch of books so my opening question, that being said, I don't have, he had a suggestion for music for opening question, but I figured I'd just do something that appeals to me a little bit more, which okay. is, are you, separate, are you I feel like you're a reader, right? Oh yeah, are, absolutely. Okay, okay, I was hoping. I'm the, I, I I'm figured, the son of English teachers. Yeah, I'm What's the son I? of English teachers. Oh, I'm the son oh, of English this teachers. This is perfect, yeah. this is perfect, this is mm -hmm. perfect. So if you can remember, what was the first book as a child or like probably more middle school? What was the first book that you were just like, I can't put this down. I hate every time I have to. Start oh, I know. Reading. Oh, great. It's like, I, these are my friends. I don't want to leave them. Tell me. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, that's a Douglas great answer. Adams. Yeah, that was the one where. That's a great answer. As far as I can remember, that was the first time that like immediately after finishing the first book i wanted the second uh, so long and thanks yeah. for all the fish right yeah, yeah oh yeah. you know what <sighs> might be a wrinkle in time actually mm. oh that's also a really 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 good those two definitely stand out so i guess you know, there's I my, my beginning with science fiction as well i haven't so. revisited the wrinkle in time series since I've been Orthodox and I do remember some of the symbology of it that I, I haven't thought about since I've become Orthodox, which my, we've been Orthodox for about 10 years now. And I need to go revisit those because my kids would really like them, but mm -hmm. I just wonder how they sit now as opposed to back. You know what I'm talking about? Especially mm -hmm. the later books. Mm -hmm. Isn't there one that's kind of based on Noah ish do you remember that i would it's been so long it's at this point i would well. i would have to go back but i just remember having my mind 
I just remember having my mind blown mm-hmm. 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 by that, you know, but I think th- with the Douglas Adams books was the first time that I was exposed to like sophisticated humor. Yes. And it was, it seemed to be just, just at that level where I was like, I get this. And I, I it's it like it, yeah. I think that it really like increased my sense of humor. Like it was a massive it, jump for me to so have a sophisticated sense of humor. Were you then? I'm going to say 12, maybe okay. 11 or 12. That seems yeah. like a bit, it could have been even yeah. 10 maybe, but yeah. probably 11 or 12, sixth grade, something like that. Yeah. yeah. What about you, father? Uh, it was something I shouldn't have been reading. It was the, um, well, that's it. <laughs> Elric, <I> mean... <laughs> of, Elric of Mel It's, it was the eternal champion series. So it's the first one, uh, Oh gosh, what was it? Uh, the White Wolf, I think it was. Um, and so it was by Michael Moorcock, who's oh. uh, really kind of like proto antihero. Like, it's like, I guess if you were to look at it, people are like, oh, it's like Tolkien, who kind of like introduces this kind of broader fantasy world, you know, or concept to like the world. But Michael Moorcock is like a whole nother substream that like was doing stuff really early. Like one of the first multiverse that I'm aware of, like people who like brought in this, this concept of the multiverse, but he had this character, um, Elric of Melnabone, who was this, I mean, just the most goth gloomy, just like anti-hero like of, of all time. And so like, I just, I ate that stuff up as, as like, I don't know, nine, you know, oh, wow, that's yeah, I should not have been reading it, but like, yeah, it was like, it was like my first like novel on my own, just like, oh, this is, say so yeah, like nine, something like that. Yeah. Well, today I found my what eight-year-old. Yours, yeah. oh, okay, go ahead. Well, let me say, I, no, I found yeah. my eight-year-old reading Frankenstein. Ooh. And it's the, well, yeah, ooh, but also like, it's the first time she's gone for my bookshelves and yeah. just like pulled something that's yeah. not like a kid book, you know, or that I didn't suggest to her. And like, I was like, okay, we need to have a conversation. I was, it was, she was like 45 pages into it. And I'm like, I don't even remember when it gets scary. Yeah. But I, I mean, I she's not so. a very mature eight-year-old. So I was like, we're not there yet. No, we're not there yet. But yeah. Yeah. She's that, man. That's, a, that's a very adult. That's a very adult book. Yeah. Very it's adult. Creepy. And uh, she's, like I said, I, I, I mean, it could have been something like, you know, I, I don't know, interview with a vampire. I mean, thank goodness she didn't. <laughs> Yeah. That's, I mean, she that's adult that. in a different way. It that's is. A, that's or adult like in like the uh, adult Thrones. bookstore way. <laughs> yes, that's on my bookshelf, and I'm yeah. like, I need to like move everything that's like that up high, or I don't know. I was. Some people person. have a liquor cabinet. You have For a books? bookshelf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is that just gonna make her want to read them more? Yeah, probably. Well, at least yeah. she's reading. She's reading. Well, that's that was my thought, but also like I don't want you to read that. I don't want to have the conversations yet. Is what it is. Well, I, I will tell you, my parents did have one of those high shelves. Yeah. And I distinctly remember, probably freshman year of high school, I definitely snuck in there and I read all of it. I but think not eight. Freshman, but not though. eight. Yeah. yeah. Eight is, I just, I don't care. That's too young. That's too young. I don't want her reading actual adult books yet. Right. Just because right, she right. can doesn't mean she should. I'm not ready for it. But by the way, uh, that's going to be a good theme, I think. Just because yeah, you can't just, okay. doesn't mean you should. Doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Or it's just like there's things that you're not ready for yet. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Like mm-hmm. that can be okay. But my pick is definitely the one that I have the strongest memory of. This isn't probably the first one because I did like to read a lot, but the one that's like stuck with me is definitely Tolkien, Lord of the Rings. Like I remember yeah. finishing it and just, I was probably 12 and like crying myself to sleep because I didn't want it to be over. Like wow. just devastated that I was done with it. So did you read Lord of the Rings first? Oh yeah. Out of out of all of oh, them. Yeah. See, I I I I think I read The Hobbit well, probably, probably around that time. I would say probably my mom read The mm-hmm. Hobbit to me. And mm. then I I I don't remember reading The Hobbit as much as I remember Lord, reading Lord of the Rings. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. That's just I have a very bad memory. But I think that I read Lord of the Rings first. 
I was familiar with The Hobbit. We always watched what was the movie, like the animated movie, you know? Oh, the oh, oh. the um the yeah, Rankin Bass one. Yes. That's excellent. Oh, oh it's, it's so, so good. good. It's yes. so it's great. Excellent. So good. The animation's great. Yeah. The, the music. The writing's great. The music's great in there. Oh, yeah. And so the Return good. of the King is great too. Hey, did you have you seen that one? The Return yeah. of the King. Oh, you gotta see that one. Bearded Elrond, right? Yes, yes, and that's the one with that great song, Frodo of the Nine Fingers. Oh, super good. Yes, yes, and then they had the one song with the orcs, and it's like, Where there's a whip, there's a way. It's like this whole kind of song. You know what? I don't think I've seen it. Oh man, forget about it. You guys, I don't think I've seen it. Whatever plans you had this weekend, drop them. Okay, yeah, watch Return of the King, the animated one, Rankin Bass, same ones who did. Uh, the Hobbit, incredible, incredible. Now I gotta watch The Hobbit. Did, with my did they? Did they also do? They only did uh, those two movies, or they so, did three? So, so what it is? Rankin Bass did The Hobbit. Yeah. Right. And then Ralph, and then Ralph Bakshi. That's right, Ralph Bakshi. Did, yeah, did the Lord of the Rings. It was the whole, right. whole rotoscope thing, right? Yep. 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 And, and then, uh, and then Rankin Bass did the uh, Return of the King. And they're, okay. they're just, they're excellent. The character designs, the animation, so good, so good, so good. That's awesome. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. it. Yeah. So, boom, big recommendation. Yeah. I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. No problem. <laughs> okay, so we were talking before we started recording about kind of the direction that we wanted to go. And um, Cyprian really wanted to talk about modesty <laughs> within the church. But also otherwise, but I, this is a question that I think I have for father that um, having grown up within like a very uh, traditional conservative kind of background, it's hard for me to kind of differentiate between kind of like this puritanical American idea of modesty versus like an orthodox modesty. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really helpful because my kids are at an age that we're starting to have conversations and I have a very difficult time having conversations with them about it without feeling like I'm shaming them Mm -hmm. because that's how I felt when I was a child. And we, that Mm -hmm. was talked about. It was also talked about very much in a, in a female centered way. Like mm-hmm. modesty was very much like your your body is. I don't know where I got this, but definitely when I hit puberty, I started feeling like there's something shameful about my body. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And when we talk about this with the kids, especially when it's time to go to church and it's like, no, we need to cover our bodies more. I mean, like, look at father. He's literally wearing like I don't know, seven layers of clothing or something like (laughs) that's helpful (laughs) for the nuns, you know, having monastics in our parish is really helpful. But when I hear any, I'll let you go father, but like, it's, it's, it's still hard for me to be honest. It's really hard for me to not, to like, not hear the one. And then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. Like, honestly, um, I want to kind of answer it. I mean, surprise, surprise, I want to answer it in a kind of a non-direct way, you know? Um, So like, you know how in the church, um, if we're comparing our iconography, right? And so like, um, if we were to have a um, Eastern crucifixion and a Western crucifixion, there'd be some really striking distinctions between the two, right? Right. And so... The thing is, they're both a crucifixion, they're both Christ, they're both male, like there's all these things, right? But what it is, is the emphasis, it's where the emphasis lies in the Western crucifixion that we would have a problem with. Um, And the emphasis on the the loss, the, um, the kind of torture, the spectacle, you know what I mean? Um, Whereas if you look at a, an, an Eastern crucifixion, um, Christ is there, but it's like, you know, the, the emphasis is on him. Um, one is a victim, one lays his life down willingly, right? 
One mm -hmm. is, you know, tortured and just mm -hmm. um, a, a kind of gnarled, broken mass of flesh. The other one is 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 a, is the the glorified and perfect um, visage of an offering, a willing offering. Okay, you mm -hmm. you, you you see where I'm going with this, yes. right? Very and it's kind of hard because maybe people don't have visuals, but whatever. Um, everyone's smart; they can figure it out. So, so the problem is the emphasis. So there's right. overlap, right? There's there's mm -hmm. overlap in, in some regards, but I think the thing is the emphasis. So, like, for the Puritans, we have to understand like that whole Puritanical perspective, which really is in the water for us as Americans, you know, it, it, it yeah. affects so much of, of what, of how we perceive things um, on the deepest of levels. And what I, what I wanna really kind of emphasize here too is that a lot of it is a projection, right? A lot of it is like, like that shame you feel, it, what is the shame? But really it's like, it's the projection of the male's guilt for, for, for having absolutely. This, absolutely. this voracious. Absolutely. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Of course, yeah. So, so I, I would say this because um, it's, it's, it's not the same if you're talking to people who aren't from the States. Okay, there, so there's, tell there's, me more there's, about there's, that. Oh, oh, definitely. There's a, diff, there's a different vibe, right? So, um, but let me just keep going further with, with the, my train of thought. We can kind of get in, into that, but like, so all that being said, you know, um, the mo modesty in the West, which can sometimes be in a quote unquote orthodox context, because you have a, if you have a, a, a parish of converts, right, it's going to be real hard for them unless they have a pastor who understands what's happening. It's going to be hard for them to shake that. They're just going to think yes. like, hey. We're yeah. just going to overlay our puritanical view on it and then it, it matches, right? Yeah. And so that's the problem is where a lot of people, yeah, we kind of talk about this. It's like, it's the real path, right? People should, I've said this before, people should not come to orthodoxy because it's the most conservative expression of Christianity. Like, yes, it is. But if you're here for that reason, you're here for the wrong reason. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. The, the overlap. But right? Conservative meaning what though, Father? Because I, I think that's, to, yeah. that's important, yeah, to, to so what delineate. I mean by yeah, so what I mean by conservative, I mean by conservative in regards of a particular um, social perspective. It's like, of course, we're conservative, of, of course. But what I mean by the confession that has almost from a um father i'm not hearing you are you getting glitchy or is that me i think it's father okay <laughs> i think it's father because i'm hearing okay. i'm hearing you i was thinking that it was me because i'm here in saipan Okay, so you can hear me Hold well. On. I think it was really getting yes. into the good part. No, so there he goes. There he goes. Father's back. Okay, I think Sorry. that was me, actually, not you. So <laughs> I think I think it was. Wow, which is which is wild to me that finally, out of all the times that there's an issue, <laughs> it isn't me. I'm yeah, like, yeah. wow, this is this is incredible. Yeah. No, so yeah. so I think I think where we where we lost you, at least where I lost you, was we're talking about conservatism. We're t we're saying that like it's a difference. Societal societal norm, but I think we're gonna need the whole rest of that. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, like, what I mean by conservative, I mean from a exclusively socio political moralistic view. Okay. Right. That that's that's what I mean, and that's why it's it's. And I know people we can get into the weeds on it semantics, and maybe that will happen in the comments. But just to kind of keep it moving. That's why it's good to make a distinction between traditionalist and conservative, because I would say it's it's for this context, especially it's just better for us to say we're more in line with the traditionalist than, than what we would say conservative, because conservative has too much of a materialist sociopolitical connotation. Yes, you're getting into like the religious right. And what I mean by that is like the the um, 
what's his name? Like the 00, not the 007, the 700 Club and like- Jerry, like Jerry Falwell. Yeah, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson. Yeah, yeah, Pat Robertson. Yeah, yeah, Pat Robertson. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like that, that's not the thing, right? That's not the thing. So anyways, um, so cause what, cause what that is, is actually a weird, in a weird twisted kind of Gnosticism that rejects the body. Okay, that that's- that, that rejects sexuality, that rejects all those things, right? And so the modesty of the church is not, is not a rejection. The asceticism of the church is not a rejection. And in fact, the, um, the humility of the church is not a rejection of the body, right? Or of creation. It's, it's actually uh, a valuing of it, right? We, like, we abstain from 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 me not because it's bad but because we're, we're looking for something greater right um we abstain from sex during fast times uh or whatever period of pr uh, time for prayer whatever that is not because sex is bad because we're, we're, we're moving to something greater whereas in the which whereas in the kind of american puritanical thing just it's because it's bad because sex is bad right. because right. the female body is dangerous yes. and man is guilty and he and he knows he can't control himself which is which is why muslims you know the burqa for the muslim now i will say this right because I, I you know it's it's to be clear there's 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 these issues because when i've told people it's like well the problem isn't the, the burqa because like i don't have a problem with the burqa the problem is the denial of who christ is right so it's like just I'm I'm only saying that because if someone has a proper understanding of modesty, like go for it, God bless you. But it it's not about the rejection of the female body. The female body is bad or evil or sexuality is evil. It, it's it's not that. So it, it's really the problem is the is the emphasis. Does that make sense? The emphasis being on the modesty of the church is really all about. A, a, an asceticism that embraces um, and, and seeks to heal and to participate in the healing and the, the salvation of, of, of the human body, right? That's mm -hmm. what modesty is about, right? This is something that keeps that, that was, that came up multiple times this week, Father. And, and so it's been on my mind is, and this represents an, yet another time, is that constantly, with orthodoxy, I'm being confronted with like these, these paradoxes that are resolved in Christ or these paradoxes that are resolved in the church. I guess, you know, it's the, the both and sort of situation, right? Mm -hmm. That it's constantly, it's like, we're covering the body out of a love of the body. It's mm -hmm. not that we're covering the body because the body is a, a thing Bad that should evil. not be seen, mm -hmm. right? Because it's evil, right? But it's that, no, 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 it's because it is valuable. It's because we love it that, it, that it's being covered, right. Right? right? And that's like these sorts of, of paradoxes. That's why I think it's, it's, it is important to distinguish modesty because I, I think it's really easy to go wrong because it's just, it's, it's one of, I see the trajectory. I see the trajectory of how something starts in tradition and it starts with this resolved paradox and it's right and it's the truth. And then just out of our own laziness of, okay, this system is working. Yes, we're covering, women are covering. This seems to be making life better, like things are good. A generation moves forward and somebody either isn't properly catechized. They don't know the reason why they do the thing. And it's like, why are we covering up? It's like, cover up. Tell, yeah. A man tells his daughter, cover up. Why are we covering up? Yeah. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, do it. Right. that happened to me. I like let slip the practice of covering my head because of like kind of transitional times in our church. And father had to ask me to cover my head when I approached the chalice and I was mortified and offended for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. But then I had to like, obviously I, you know, uh, like I did that. I like, he's my spiritual father. Of course, I'm going to do what he's asking me to do in this way. And so like, as my own, like petty act of rebellion, I would just only cover my head <laughs> and I would go up to the chalice and it, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's funny, but it's also like, it's so childish. 
but I, it wasn't until actually I was listening to one of the episodes and I know that father has said this before, but like it resonated, like it never has, which is that I am a guest that we are guests. I'm this, I'm coming into a tradition that I did, I wasn't raised in and like, I need to observe all of the traditions that I know I need to observe. Yeah. Yeah. And what's, and what's great is that there's um, just experience will bear out that like, if you observe, you may not understand, but you'll experience. And then and I have, right. Yes, yes absolutely. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that's a spiritual, and that's a spiritual principle. And I, I think that's part of the problem is that, you know, again, here I am on moralism. It's like, I feel like I talk about it all the time, but people don't understand how it really can um, obfuscate your ability to experience and to um, understand spiritual principles, right? Because you you are actually um, at best stopping short, if not flat out, almost kind of like um, having a, a you know, it, it's, it's like a switcheroo almost, you know what I mean? It, it feels like it's spiritual, it, feel, it feels, but it's it's not because it it's, it's based more on um, a, a kind of um, man-centered versus a Christ-centered principle. It's based more into, based more in psychology and, and, and social construct. And, and I know that word gets thrown around a lot, but in this yeah. case, I'm using it's proper than it is in the spiritual principle, which is eternal, which is spiritual, which is, you know, um, not simply just transcendent, but it's, it's, um, it, it, it permeates your being. And so it begins to affect how you experience life. You know, a moral, moralism just conditions behavior. Whereas spirituality, you know, true spirituality will, will begin to permeate your being and, 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 and affect and, and transfigure you, transfigure your experience, your understanding, your perspective, your paradigm, all of it, you know, it, how you walk, how you eat, you know, how you dress, all those things in it, it will integrate your being so that you're, what you're doing isn't just some sort of addendum, you know, what you're wearing and how you're wearing it isn't just an addendum, but it's, it's a expression of your being. Right. Truly, it, it gets to that. It gets to that point. But you have to kind of like experience first. And, and that's a biblical principle. You know, God didn't really reveal himself until um, Abraham obeyed. Abraham hears his voice, but it's, mm. it's really, he doesn't like, see, like encounter him until he's obeyed mm. and started to, to make that movement. And this bears out in our life always. It's like God, God calls upon us. And, you know, depending upon how quickly and how readily we obey, you know, we're able to then experience him, you know, so this, this is there's this, this seems to be. And I think that this was my frustration always in my life with Christianity, of course, only being exposed to Western Christianity and especially mm -hmm. my frustration with evangelicals mm -hmm. is that. And, and I think the reason why it was so very easy for me to be attracted to the occult, right. Mm -hmm. And to like, to go in that direction and to have these experiences because there, there was, it was always oriented toward experience. And the idea behind it was like, do these things. And then the question would be like, well, why should I do these things? Right. And if I was asked this to an evangelical, I'm going to get the litany, right. They're going to cite off the biblical verses. They're going to yeah. say all this. God said this in this chapter and this verse and this and this and this, and it's just going to go down, down, down. And they can do that for an hour. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're oriented toward experience, right? When your orientation is, well, this is the, what you're oriented toward is theosis, hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's like, no, you're going to, if you'll just do this, you'll see. And then I don't need to explain it to you, mm -hmm. right? Just mm -hmm. do it. Then you'll have the experience. You'll understand that if you don't do it, you don't have the experience. You're unable to go deeper. And then I don't have to explain anything to you. Right. But what's, what's funny is that people don't understand it's, it is, counterintuitive and it is paradoxical to some degree but this principle of, of obedience first it actually is primarily ne necessary so that the free will is engaged and i know that seems weird to people because when you use the word obedience right then and there they go like the obedience is like counterintuitive to obedience to an american um 
that's you know just an American in general. <laughs> it's like it's counterintuitive to the, to this experience of freedom. But once you once you've experienced actual obedience, you see how freeing and and liberating and, and true it's true freedom. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because when you when when God says or in or if God uses someone in someone's life, just obey, just just engage this first, and then you'll see. The reason why that is really getting to the this core thing of freedom is because outside of that, everything is contingent upon the direct expression and the force of, of the will of the one expressing. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like here. I don't know if I do. Sorry, forgive me. So yeah, that's great. So like when like for instance, okay, God. <laughs> God speaks and God speaks through his channels, right? So priest, a father, a spiritual father, a husband, sometimes a mother, sometimes, you know, an older brother or sister. You see what I'm saying? Like there's these proper channels in which obedience is 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 healthy and and expected, right? So um when this whole thing of like just you know, God speaking through, let's say your spiritual father, just trust me, just do this, right? Right. right. And, you'll, and you'll understand. The reason why that's all about engaging freedom is because one of the, if it's all about needing to become pedantic and explaining something, and it's like trying to use the expression of, of words, articulation of words, which are really an expression of, the, of, of my will to get you to really kind of mm. like understand mm -hmm. and acquiesce, right? right. I, I'm involved in it in such a way where there's a dialectic that's happening. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you just obey, right. in that obedience, now you're entering into the space where there's experience. And that experience yeah. almost begins to disengage that dialectic of the person mm -hmm. speaking to you and trying to like give you direction. You following me? Absolutely. And, and in that sense, now the, the the spirit of the Lord, which is which is freedom now begins to engage you and you're and you're able now in your freedom to experience it on your own time at your own pace in a way that right. is not as easily engaged or not as freely engaged when someone's like no da 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 it's this does that make sense what absolutely. I'm saying? It's, absolutely it's the difference between willingly surrendering yep. and mm -hmm. being conquered in a battle mm -hmm. yes. right because really yes. the person who's asking for the charts and the graphs and the reasons and all of this, what they want is they want to have a debate mm -hmm. and they want to, they're not going to take on this thing unless they are bested in the debate. Right. So they want to have, well, they don't fight. want to be bested. That's, they don't want to, they don't they, want they're to they're be. They're not going like the whole point is that they there don't have to. Right. There you go. Yeah. That, that right. and, and as opposed to just being like, uh, yeah, I surrender. Right. I don't want to, but I'm going to, right. that's right. what I did. Yeah, and 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 it's but yeah. and I think that yeah. that's where the freedom comes in because then you're truly yeah. free. Yeah. Because I I know myself, I can <laughs> innumerable times, and I just even saying it, I get the feeling like a certain time in my life, <laughs> and relatively recently, you know what I mean. That it's like now I catch myself, but engaging in a debate, oh, and yeah. it's just like the feeling yes. where it's like, yeah. nope, I'm gonna win this. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be correct here. Yeah. I'm going to win. Yeah. You know, I'm not entering it looking for truth. I'm not entering it looking for there to be an experience that comes out of even if you beat me. Right. Because like you right. say, even if you even if you beat me, I'm going to rationalize and justify yeah. of why win. I'm still right. 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 I still won. Yep. Yep. There's no always still won. Yep. Never did I lose. So there's no change possible for yeah. me. There's no yeah. transformation possible That's for so me. True. Like I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. The only and, way that I can be transformed is if I surrender. That's yep. it. And um, it's impossible you to encounter Christ. Yeah. Because it's precisely in that loss that you encounter Christ. That's where his spirit's found. Is in that crucifixion. Oh, there's, there's your, the crucifixion. There's yeah. the crucifixion. There's the difference, the surrender, the willing that's surrender. surrender. Right. That, mm. That's the key. Because you're going to be, see, the thing is, is, What's, what's really crazy is that um, how God does not actually seek to conquer you in that sense. And that's mm -hmm. what's terrifying is because he'll often leave someone like, okay, you know, like you're free. 
you're free to reject me. You, in fact, not only are you free to reject me, you're free to, to commit unspeakable, unspeakable acts of evil if you want. But just know that there's a principle there that you'll have to face, but you, you have, this, you have this, this measure of freedom. And that's hard for people to swallow. But when you begin to understand that this is what it means to be made in the image of God, is to have this freedom. And that God is, is, God is to say that God's honorable and good, it does, I mean, we all can feel that that's not sufficient, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why people scratch their heads. They don't understand like why bad things happen because what they don't understand is how incredibly um, unyielding God is and is in, how unyielding God is in regards to honoring and, and guarding man's freedom. Because it, it, is, it is the thing, it is the thing, right? We bearing the image of God, that is the thing, our freedom. And so this is really important because Christ in his sacrifice and his willing, in his willing laying down of his life, um, when we enter into that surrender, now we're also honoring his freedom. You see what I'm saying? We're honoring his freedom and there's a reciprocation and there's, that's these kind of first initial steps of communion, right? And I know that sounds crazy to people to be like, what do you mean I'm honoring God and like his freedom? But it's like, I'm just telling you, like, this is why it's the cross was a scandal to the ancient world. Because what, what do you mean God and, and how the ancient world would understand God and, and omnipotence and power and all these things, like the idea of vulnerability, the, the idea of God being vulnerable and being, you know, a victim, all those things, like, like what? It, it, it's, it's not just scandalous to the ancient mind, it's scandalous to people now. Well, right? how, how, are you, how are you powerful if you don't have the power to surrender? Like if you don't have the power to be the victim, if you can't be the victim, you're not omnipotent. Right. That's right. And that and that's that's another like mind blower. That that's Hades swallowing him and being like, uh oh, I I don't uh oh, what just happened? Right. That's why people scratch their heads like, I don't get this whole thing of like the devil didn't know and blah blah blah, right? Well, when you begin to really get into this thing of like, you the often- The devil didn't know, I'm sorry, forgive me. What do you mean the devil didn't know? Sorry. So hell and death, the devil didn't really understand who Christ was when, when, when he was swallowed by death, let's say. Okay. Right? And this is, this is really key because this is why we say trampling down death by death. Uh -huh. Death cannot hold. Death cannot hold him. He he is life, and so this is the this is where you start getting into the whole thing of like Jesus not wanting to, um, you know, don't tell anybody I healed you, right? Don't it, my you know woman, my time isn't yet. Like there, why is you know Christ is waiting for this time period because it's all about this perfect timing where who he was would not be premature in its revelation because he is soon to die. And if the devil truly understood and knew that if the devil knew what was going to happen, right, it would have been a whole different game scenario. But Christ being swallowed by death is how the fathers understand it. He goes down and in many ways, it's like a trick. It's like he's swallowed up by death. There's Jonah and the whale. And, but, but it can't hold him. And so it's almost like, hey, to use the term, it's almost like a, like a, you know, kind of suicide bomber. Like, boom, he blows up hell because he can't be held and contained, right? And the arrogance of, you know, the devil and hell, the, that arrogance of the fallen powers to think that their victory was final, it's, it's revealed and it's undone. So that, that's important to understand because we... And we, just like the devil, oftentimes don't understand that it's actually in Christ's weakness and his surrender and his loss and his death. That's how his power is manifested, right? It doesn't mean anything 
if you prove to everybody you got the biggest muscles and you got the biggest gun. I mean, it's like, okay, duh, people can see that. But when you, but when you actually can go low, it, it doesn't make sense. And that's how you know it's God. You understand, you understand what I'm saying? The, yeah. the, the mystery of being, the inability to reconcile, it doesn't make sense. See, that, see that's the problem is we, we try to make sense of all this, but like you can't make sense of it that's one of the reasons why you know it's god like the fanciful aspects of all the other religions and their their tales they're fanciful enough to be like okay like religion spirituality whatever but they're always reconcilable i'm just i'm you know listen islam is reconcilable it makes sense it just makes sense like yeah eye for an eye that makes sense you know what i mean like like I, all of the there, there are no paradoxes in Allah. Allah no is totally non-paradoxical. He's just I, I, like he's he's this thing. This is what he does. This is how he, you know it. You know right. it. There's no question. Right. And Christ per, Christ reveals precisely that he is God through the, all the paradoxes. It's the paradoxes mm -hmm. that you know that it's God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and the way that the the way that they're reconciled for us that is how you know you're you know that's one of the fruits of, of of knowing that you have begun to enter into this fellowship with god because they're not reconciled like a syllogism right like they're, they're reconciled to us because we we were able to accept them in our hearts and then as we accept it in our heart there our mind gets transfigured you know we begin to have the mind of christ and then these spiritual laws begin to make sense because we're no longer carnal the carnal man doesn't understand the things of the spirit as it says in the scripture. And that's why you run into people and they'd be like, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And, you know, I'll go even one level down. This is why, you know, um, I say this in charity, but this is why for a lot of Protestants, I would say to you, this is why we would say, you better double check where you're at. Because when you like, these traditions don't make sense right the saints right. being able to pray them that doesn't make sense and like all this well that's that's a sign that you're not all the way over that you're still in this realm of rationalism you're still in this realm of like you know uh you're still in the kind of materialist realm you're still applying rationalism and 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 and, and human fallen logic to god right? Is that well, and it's, it's saying that to... sorry go ahead please please oh i was just gonna say that like isn't isn't that why when for someone who's seeking or anybody it like you have to go to you have to experience it like you just mm -hmm. have to go to mm -hmm. services it doesn't but, matter how many things you listen to or how many things you books you read it, it's all wonderful but like it's an it's liter literally nothing if you actually haven't that's right you you can't that's I mean, right. and it's a whole different thing to experience it it's completely and experiencing different. it over and over. No, it's not like you just go. Well, actually, a lot of people, it is you. They go once and they're like, this is it. I'm never going back. This is right. the one. Right. Right. But you have right. to be there. Right. And I mean, I'm sure, you know, God can do anything. And I'm sure there's some people out there, but I feel comfortable saying that's why, generally speaking, no one, no one's converted by watching the liturgy on the screen either. Yeah. Because even when you're looking at it in that kind of like aspect, there's it's you're still engaging the rational faculties and you're like, oh, this is a pageant. Oh, this is, oh, this is an interesting ritual. This is a pageant. This is like whatever. It's only until you're actually in the liturgy and you're enveloped in, in mm -hmm. that sacred space that it's like, okay, yeah, I understand that that's, you know, vestments, that's a man, that's that constats is wood. That's in, I, I get all that, but I don't know what I just saw. Mm -hmm. That's people. Something experience. just happened. Something like, just what happened. just happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's and that's undeniable. Yeah, that's, it's 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 so undeniable. Like you know, but you don't understand what happened. And also, again, back to the it doesn't make sense because right. one of the most powerful things about it is that it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Is that something happened? I can't explain it. Like those two things, when you hear somebody, it doesn't matter what it is. When you hear somebody say those two things, this thing happened, I can't explain it. What you know has happened with that person is their reality has been shaken. Mm -hmm. Like their reality has been shattered. And so then, you know, for somebody to say, well, I'm not going to do this practice or I'm not going to, 
move any further because it doesn't make sense. It's like, that's actually the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. It's when it doesn't, it not making sense mm -hmm. is because maybe it's not supposed to make sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe well, you're experiencing well, well, something me. that's beyond your ability to understand. Yeah, and, that, and that's it right there. That's, that's where I was going to go right there is because the one thing people, the, they'll find all the different reasons. And, but the one thing that's hard for us to get to is like, oh, it's beyond me. Mm. And, and, that, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And even in, even in the spiritual life, it's like one of the markers for me of being like, okay, this is good, you know, is when people get to this point where like, they don't need to necessarily understand everything I'm saying to them. Like, okay, father, blah, blah, blah. Like, and it's not because I'm like, oh, finally, like you're gonna like acquiesce and obey me. It's not that at all. It's like, what that means is now you're getting to this place where you could actually be able to experience something deeper. Because until you, until you say that, you're, you are the measure, right? It, it, it's you are the measure by which you understand something. So in other words, until you recognize that something's beyond you, you're, there is only so far you can go spiritually. That's the first step to really go into some of the, to go into like the real depths is to be like, of course, I don't understand this. We're talking about God. You know what I mean? Of course, I don't understand this. We're talking about, you know, plumbing the depths of the human heart. And I am just like the youngest, smallest speck in like the history of mankind. What hubris would I have to think that like right. my understanding of my, you know, 38, 48, 58, whatever years is sufficient. You understand what I'm saying? And, and that's, that's key. That's key. Because you, this is, this is one of the problems with like, this emphasis on a kind of scientific forensic perspective is that you're trying to overlay methods of observation that can that only that only work when you are the highest point of that of reference that's how science works right you're <laughs> oh that's really deep do you understand because, what I'm like I understand exactly what you're saying, but we've got to we've got to dig unpack a little it. deeper on that yeah, one yeah, because yeah. that's super deep, right? Yeah, give me a unpack it. Like like when people want to apply scientific method to like spiritual principles, things like that, it can't work because that because the the epistemological kind of source is you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're the source of understanding and knowledge and and and, and aspects resources that you can control and access are, are a part of that. You know what I mean? So we'll say like, no, I'm not. Um, science is the whatever thing. But yeah, science works for you in the sense of like, you understand it, right? You can access it. It's in your control. So you still stand as the master and you project down on whatever you're observing, like, oh, well, you can't observe something higher than yourself. Well, because right? you don't, because you don't have you to observe. It's like what what I'm thinking in this case, Father, like that the, what's occurring to me is it's like an ant in an ant farm, mm -hmm. right? To where like, the, okay, the ant scientist. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's been a lot of like short science fiction stories and things like this where people have explored this, this concept, you know? And even people who talk about like simulation theory and all of that, right? They're exploring this concept where it's like, okay, the ant scientist is like, all of a sudden, all of the, you know, all of their tunnels collapse. Right. And they're like, these tunnels collapsed. And then every once in a while, these tunnels collapse. They're like, what is going on? And they're observing everything in the ant farm, all of the things. And they're like, okay, it's because when we have 50 ants over here and 30 ants okay. over here, and the temperature is this, then what we've noticed is that there's a 20% chance of, but really it's just a, a, a the baby brother coming in and shaking the ant farm and putting right. it down. You know what I mean? Like, right. And so right. it's like, you will never, if you're the ant, you will never, the ant scientist will never ever get to, no, there's a human, I'm in an ant farm and it just shook the ant farm and That's set right. it down. That's right. That's right. It can, it just can never get there. It can never get there. And, and for a lot of people, they get stuck because they're, this is when I would begin to introduce this understanding of the principle, the principalities and the powers. And even, and even how, what governs our lives are not what, we, what people really think it is. And what's funny is like, you're seeing people like Naomi Wolf waking up to this. 
right? I mean, you know, we all know who Naomi, Naomi Wolf is, right? James, James Lindsay, too. I mean, these super materialist yeah. commentators who are like, oh, it's a spiritual war. Yeah. In the last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the last year. Like, so basically, um, Naomi Wolf is this name, <laughs> I'm butchering her. Naomi Wolf is uh, up until recently a very, yeah, liberal, um, absolute materialist. I don't know if it's too far to say she was an atheist. I don't know if that's going too far. But I think like, that's, I think that's, a, she might disagree. I mean, she's a secular, I think she's of Jewish definitely eth- ethnicity. So yeah. she's like a secular Jewish intellectual. Yeah, yeah. Right. secular Jewish. Like, and since the, since the advent of the dim age, since the advent of the, since the apocalypse, she has begun to really kind of process what's going on here, interestingly enough. And what's interesting is, you know, like logically, that that's kind of what we're all saying is like, this is all logical. This is all very logical. How can you not come to these conclusions, right? But paradoxically, right? But she's begun to be like, oh yeah, that, like there's clearly something evil. There's clearly evil in the world that's happening. And and it's and it's on a on a spiritual level, which you know principalities powers all that good stuff but but this all ties in because we're talking about things that are above us and and when we try to make it like well you know joe biden blah 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 and you know the democrats blah 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 and you know well the trump supporters blah 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 and and which is why we're doing this project right because it's like that is not it (laughs) right that that that's not what's really moving and shaking the ant farm Right. And when you begin to really step out of that and accept it, this pulls, this brings us full circle to the first part of the, the conversation from my perspective. When you begin to accept it, you know, I'm making acceptance and obedience kind of analogous in this context, right? When you accept it, then you're able to experience like, oh yeah, there are things moving, you know, underneath, above, and around all of this. And, and it's, it isn't, you know, kind of our machinations exclusively, you know, and it's not to say that there isn't, but exclusively that that's not the case, you know? So anyways, like all that being the case, therefore the other side of it is also true. So when we pursue the traditions of the church and we begin to understand that things like modesty are very powerful, um, not just means of encounter and worship, they're also very powerful weapons in which we begin to um, defend our God-given faculties so that we can now um, allow our children and ourselves to develop in a way to where we could taste the, the true goodness of life. You know, when Jesus says, like, I came to give them life and life more abundantly. What does that mean? You know what I mean? It's not, it's not an abundance in regards of quantity. It's a qualitative abundance that is holistic and, and it encompasses the whole of reality and the whole being that Christ is speaking of. Does that, does that make sense what I'm saying? It well, that, that you, you see the world as abundant. Mm-hmm. You, or you perceive- You experience the world as abundant. You, you experience right. the world as abundant, as regardless abundant. of the external. Right, I'm gonna tell you this, this is funny because, and sorry, Esther, I know you wanna say something, but no, like, let me just say this. Uh, I was just talking with Andrew when I was at the hospital, um, saying the prayers for Matrona. And I can't remember the context he brought it up, but like, he brought up like money and just like, I'm not really sure about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, because God doesn't teach us to like hoard and to like quite the opposite. Why? The, the, the principles in regards of material and money are, are ones of abundance and generosity in the kingdom. I know that's going to scandalize people. I'm just telling you, that's what sermon you see. on the Mount though, right? Father, that's sermon, sermon on the on Mount. The Mount. Yeah. It, it's 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 the it's the parable of of the man who built his barns right and then you know he said i'm gonna build more barns because i got more stuff i can i mean we can go on and on it's abraham right why is abraham the father of faith because he offered intercession and hospitality hospitality mm-hmm. in that in in that time period amongst those people in that region i mean you're dealing with scarcity man like it's it's quote unquote but the scarcity isn't the thing 
scarcity is I, scarcity is a um, it is a it is a phenomena that you in, it's a phenomena in which one person engages in their in their fallen senses right and I, i'm just going to qualify this i'm not talking about some weird you know prosperity gospel i want everyone to really understand what i'm saying the the, the kingdom of god as it's been shown manifested not just in the scriptures not just the foreshadow of the old testament not just the fulfillment of the new testament but the, in the continuation of the church age, because we're still in the church age. The church age isn't, isn't done yet. There's no amen after Acts, right? So the lives of the saints, the saints are always uh, like generous, always. There isn't one saint who's, who's like not generous. Where, like, where, how do you explain that, right? And again, we're not just talking about giving away your money, right? Because it, it, it's deeper than that. Mm -hmm. it's it, 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 here's how deep it is you can save your money that's fine god's not mad at you that doesn't mean like that someone saving your money doesn't mean that they're not generous do you, do you understand what i'm saying it, it, it's it's deeper than that this is really important because what it reveals to us is that the the the, the spiritual principles by which god lays out to us they truly are the higher reality because, because the saints, not only do they live and survive sometimes for weeks and months and years on nothing but, you know, roots and communion once a year, right? How do you explain that? How do you explain that? You explain it by this principle of, of abundance and generosity, the, the abundance of the Eucharist, the abundance of the life in Christ. Like St. Saint, Saint Paisio talks about like the, the giving and the sharing and how like, when we don't do this, um, this is where we encounter scarcity. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. Yes. so scarcity is like a is like a scare tactic that the principalities, the fallen ones, and and our own human weakness. Scarcity is a phenomena that that it's a, it's a phenomena of the, it's a principle of, of the fallen world, and that phenomenon of scarcity is something that manifests that principle. Whereas the inverse in, in, in the spiritual world, um, the kingdom of God is, is abundance. You see what I'm saying? I was just I reading that. something, Father, that in the U.S., and I think this goes to most of the Western world, 40% um, of the food that is produced mm -hmm. is thrown away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... It's pretty incredible as you say that, that like there's this fear and all of this going around yeah. about like sc food scarcity, it's going to be food scarcity. And you would be like, what? No, <laughs> like, no, not even close, right. not, not even close. The only reason that, the, and, and again, it's like the only reason that, that scarcity could even be perceived, that people could even begin to, to think about scarcity is completely, in, it's completely internal. Mm -hmm. it's a tr it's guys yes. it's, it's a trick yeah it's an absolute trick mm -hmm. well is we're also used to like anything that you want is going to be available in the quality and the quantity that you desire mm -hmm. and so anything less than that is perceived as scarcity exactly right? which isn't yes, true exactly. either right no, it's right? not it's me not. getting me getting whatever i want carte blanche on un unfettered that that is not accurate either Right. No, that's gluttony. That's it's gluttony. Like exactly. So the absence of gluttony is not scarcity. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's being promoted. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Well, th and that brings me, aha, I, that's the perfect segue. Because to keep it, <laughs> to keep it topical, to keep it topical. And this one, I, I will try to handle without scandalizing. I will, I will be the one to not scandalize. But the, as we were talking before, this, the modesty issue, it seems very topical to me, especially today, because of the response to monkeypox, right? Which I think we could still say monkeypox on YouTube. I think we're not, I don't think they've got a warning label yet. So we'll see what happens with this whole thing. But it was so interesting to me. The WHO put out guidance where they were basically like, okay, here's the studies. Here's all the things. 
95% of what we're seeing in terms of, yes, there's, there's these cases, thousands around the world, but still very small. They're like, it's basically, it's limited to this one subset of men who are having these particular sexual behaviors where they are having lots of partners in a very small period of time, like a few days, and uh, in these groups of men that are doing this, and it seems to just be isolated to that. And they're like, here's our guidance. Limit your sexual partners. Like, it, it, limit your sexual partners, right? And it's like, here's our guidance. And then the city of San Francisco, they're, they, limit. they're like, we're, we're having a, yeah, limit. Just <laughs> limit, limit, limit it. We're okay. having, we're, we're going to declare today, they were like, as we record this, the mayor says, we're declaring a citywide emergency. I'm taking emergency powers because of this monkeypox outbreak. Now, mind you, there's two, there's like 200 cases out of like all of San Francisco, right? And she's like, oh, but this is a, and we need more. What does she say? We need more urgently. Send vaccines urgently. We need testing urgently. And and then the you know the senator from who, the senator Weiner or whatever from state senator from California is like, there's so much shaming. There's so much gay shaming going on with this thing. It's not about sexual behavior. What's really needed is testing and vaccines. And it's like, hold on. Like literally all you have to do is stop having sex with strangers and you won't get monkeypox. Now, Frequent, mind you, like, this is- In a condensed amount of time. Like, just don't do it like that. Like- well, or, or just limit it. Like, how about, not five, how about not, like not five a day? How about you limit it to like one stranger per week? You know what I mean? Like, how about one stranger per week? You know what I mean? Just, just, just limit it. And it's like, no, this is shaming. This is, and, and- it's just very interesting to me as I've watched this, that it's like, it's literally a pox. Mm -hmm. It's like literally, literally a pox. Open, a pox it's literally <laughs> open source, <laughs> right? And it's, and look, not trying to be scandalous, biblical here. Like it's literally only affecting people who are committing sodomy, literally. And it's like, no. That is shaming of these people to even suggest that just for a little while, till this thing goes away, that they stop participating in sodomy to prevent their own selves from getting these pox. And it's just like, this is the biggest mm -hmm. flip of the, the idea that it would be to even suggest, hey, only people who are doing this activity are getting this monkey pox. Now, mind you, these are all the same people who are like, all the kids have to wear masks at, at school mm -hmm. all the, over the last two years. You've got to wear a mask even if you're not sick. You've got to do all this, forcing you, forcing you. You can tend to restore, but it's like, oh, for, oh, not, let me not say, right. hey, how about you just stop this behavior like, for like a month? When, when, when did it become like, how is it shaming to be like, that's probably risky behavior? Like, how is that? I don't understand. I actually don't understand how that shame. <laughs> Be like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> well, the thing is, the reason why it's shaming is because it's true. Right. <laughs> the Ooh, interesting. Yeah. That's why. That's why it's shaming because. Yeah. It's well, you can't shame somebody with something that's not true, can you? Correct. Correct. Like, like, watch this. Well, Cyprian, sorry. Cyprian, you're wearing a, a V-neck T-shirt. Oh, 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 Esther, you're wearing uh, engineer overalls. <sighs> How could you? You're like, oh, okay, weirdo. Like, yeah, and, right? Oh, so it's, it's not that it's true. It's that the other person also believes that it's not virtuous. They, it, because Cause, it's- Because I yeah, think that gets to it, Esther's thing about when she was talking about body image, right? First, that's what I was to about to say. Yeah, yes. please go ahead, Esther. Because well, I, no, I that think... I was going to say is because it doesn't occur to me. It, it was told to me. I don't know how or who or by what, but somehow having a not child body anymore is inherently shameful. And that's actually to tie it together. It's still hard for me to like. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes, um, but but what that is, you know, is what is the ever, difference in that so way? Because different. I so did feel like I could feel shame, even so though. Is, so first of all, here's the thing. First of all, shame's not bad. That's the first thing. 
we've been trained to think that shame is bad. Shame is actually, there is a type of toxic shame, which is, which, which exists in the realm of, um, a, a kind of, you know, fallen, a fallen perspective. So any type of like dialectical oppositional, like, um, uh, seeking of enforcing the will, you know, tyranny, all those things that's wrong. Right. But that's, but shame is, is a faculty given to us to acknowledge the wrong and to now pursue the, the necessary means of healing. Let me give you the analogy, then I'll even break it down even further, right? We might have talked about this before. We're in a, we're, there's a terrible car accident. The three of us are driving down the road. We pull up, the car's flipped over. There's fire, blood, glass everywhere. And all we see is like a woman sitting on the, the curb there with, you know, her head, her head in her hand and just kind of like sitting there. And we look and like, there's no blood. There's no protruding bones. She's lucid. You okay? Yeah, it was a car accident, terrible car accident, but I walked away from it, you know, like, okay, that's crazy. So the EMT will be like, okay, well, let me check, you know, and the EMT will begin to feel around to see like, you know, is there any crepsis? Is there any like bone on bone somewhere, right? right. And the second you touch her up, oh, wow, that's killing me. Like you couldn't see it, but the feeling of that pain, okay, now we know where you're damaged, where you're hurt. We need to put attention there. That's how shame works, right? Okay. Pain of shame is there to help you to find the, the means of healing, right? Right. Now, in regards of like, well, my, my body maturing when I feel the shame, what that is, is that's, that's a projection. And that's where there's a toxicity in that environment and culture. Where to the man, uh, a projection of them onto me or to Yes, me? it's a projection okay, okay. of the man's, of the, you right, know, right, 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 right. Right. right? That's not what we're talking about here. I get it. Okay. In, in regards of the reason the shame there, because it's true, because they know, that's why I said the t-shirt example, because they know they shouldn't be doing it. Like they still have that conscience in them, right? This is Romans one. There's still a conscience that like deep down, they know, like, e even if they've gotten to this place where they're like, so twisted that they'll want to just like kind of justify whatever they still know that they shouldn't have like five partners in like two hours. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Of course. Like, that's, so, what, I'm so saying. that's like, what I'm saying in regards to the shame, the right. shame is it, 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 they're able to like, don't shame us. Cause they, cause it's true. Mm -hmm. And they know the truth of it because that that's why it hurts. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if, if it wasn't the case, there wouldn't be this, um, a, a, a kind of, um, um, it, an in an inordinate amount of resistance. That in or you know, me doth think the lady protests too much. Right. right? Yeah, Hamlet. That yeah, in, yeah. The in or the <laughs> inordinate amount of resistance. That's how you know that that's how you know that they know that it's true. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because right, that right, inordinate right. amount of resistance. Like you don't flip your lid over something that's not true. We don't get offended over something that isn't true. That's why when you're that's talking so to true. Someone, like like mm -hmm. like you don't get yep. offended over something that's that's yes. True. Yes. Right. Yes, absolutely. And and I and it, oh, excuse yeah. me, excuse me, excuse me. Go ahead. Excuse Sorry. Me, for that. You don't get offended over something that's not true. Forgive me. I just realized yeah. that. Yeah. Right. You don't get offended over something that's not true. Right? right. Like the truth is what's killing you. Like you know that that's yeah. true. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Well, and also something that you feel is. Um, you would never get offended over somebody stating something to you that was both true and that you truly felt was virtuous. Right. Right. So it wouldn't be like, you, really, you gave a million dollars to charity. You had, right. you were, you're a millionaire. You gave all your money to charity. You gave exactly. all your money to look at you, Mr. Exactly. I give all my money to feed <laughs> right. starving right. children. Look at you. And then, right. and then you're going to be like, oh, I feel so terrible. No, no. <laughs> absolutely yes. not. You'd be like, you'd be like, well, yeah, look at me. I, I gave it anonymously. So don't look at me, but still, okay. you right. know what I mean? Like, right. no, no, right. but, but, you know, then on the flip side, if you didn't give it anonymously, anonymously, mm -hmm. and somebody said, yeah, you know, you just gave that money so that you could assuage your guilt 
for the way that you spent the other $2 million, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or the way you earned that million dollars selling mm -hmm. drugs and weapons and whatnot, right. then the guilt, mm -hmm. That's right. then the shame. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like, oh yes, right. mm -hmm. I actually yeah. did. That's exactly it. And, and I think this is part of the problem in regards of the, the lack of dialogue, if there's even possible to have dialogue, which I think it is possible in, in certain cases, but it's just like, for me, this is, this is me actually giving respect to the members of that community, right? You hear what I'm saying? This is me giving respect and being like, no, 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 like, you know, it's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm looking at you like a human being, yeah. right? You're not it irredeemable. Was, you're redeemable. Like, you know, yeah. it's wrong. You know, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. You know, you, you know what I mean? Versus like, oh, well, you're just a, you, like, there's no hope for you, you degenerate. Of course not. You know what I mean? That's, and that's how a lot of people look at it. You know what I mean? But for me, it's like it, it really being able to say, like, no, like you're more than your appetites. You know? Well, this was, this, this is, that, I was thinking that today, Father. I was really thinking that today. I was like, where are the members of this community who were advocating for marriage, same-sex marriage, who fought so hard? Mm -hmm. Because like, wouldn't this be the opportunity to be like, look, this is what, if, we're i'm all about marriage we would prefer these people look look at all these couples that got married right not i'm not saying that that's what should be done but right. i'm saying where are they who are well, like yeah, yeah look none of us have monkeypox well, no, we're married look, and we're, we're stay with one partner no so no, no because marriage pox. doesn't mean staying with one partner right. within that community right that doesn't right. equal monogamy right that's what i'm saying <laughs> right yeah. so it's like the fact that what's not being said is that where is, where is this supposed group of individuals within this community who are virtuous and upstanding and just, it's just who I'm attracted to, shouldn't mm -hmm. they be standing up? Shouldn't there be this huge, if that's the majority, shouldn't mm -hmm. the majority of individuals in that particular community be standing up and being like, yo, yeah, it's gross. Right. We don't like these guys who right. are going and, and having five, partners in this whole we are totally against that that is not the norm they're getting monkeypox they need to stop mm -hmm. right because they're actually a threat to the rest of us who maybe are just we only have one partner and we're in these you know committed relationships and we don't want anybody bringing it home to me which is what would be which is what women would be standing up and saying mm -hmm. right like Th this is like this I is it. like I don't I, exactly. <laughs> I hope Ex exactly. Like I don't want this being brought home into my house. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't like. No, it's y'all have to stop. Right. Stop right. what you're doing. Right. right. And look, first off, your husband shouldn't be going out. You know, mm -hmm. and and I'm saying this is not that particular community, but whatever it is, right? If it was like. M m if it was g moving in massage parlors, I mean, but right? this is getting back to modesty, though. This is this is getting back because right. it's even exactly. just getting back to like, what does it mean to be modest? It's not just about like how much clothing you're wearing. That's what I was yeah. about to ask. Yeah, but, like what does that actually how, mean? How do you carry like like modesty and chastity are are connected, right? So it's like chastity, true chastity is about an inward disposition, right? Because you can have someone who has an ex like a, a kind of like affect of modesty, but they're not chaste because inwardly they're they're ravenous or whatever. You, you see what ravenous I'm saying? Wolves. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and so that's why, like, you have to be clear that like it modesty only goes so far because modesty is is the like externalization of chastity, right? But understand chastity is this kind of inward disposition. But modesty has everything to do with not just how, what you're wearing, but, but how you carry your being, right? And I'd even go as, as far as to say that, like, modesty is a, modesty is a former type of meekness. If we're understanding meekness as, you know, um, in this context, this definition, like power under control, right mm -hmm. if we're understanding meekness as that modesty is the awareness of the body but yet modesty is the awareness of the beauty of the body and the power of the body and and the the veiling of the body 
right? And the awareness of its beauty. Just like meekness is the subduing of, of, of strength and power, right? You know you have this power, but but you but there's a a sub a, a willful handling and subduing of it. Does do you understand what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. Clark Kent. Yeah, it's Clark. It's it's Clark Kent. I've got to be Andrew this time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but where, whereas you know, and and that's what makes obviously Superman different. Like that everybody knows that trope, right? Is that it's like the real guy is the super powerful one. It's not that right. he dresses up and becomes the superhero, right. Right? right? It's that he's the superhero when he's not dressed up. That's right. And then he, when he gets dressed up, he's, he's meek. Perfect. That, that's, right? that's actually really great because I've never seen it that way. And Superman is exactly that image of, of meekness and, and modesty to some degree, yeah. Well, he's very mo- he's very modest. Yeah. Clark Kent, the character of Clark Kent, oh. is like ultra modest. Ultra modest. Ultra modest. Superman's not. Not at all. Not no. at all. No, but Superman is meek. Yes. Yes. Yes, because it's in it's it, it's an inward disposition, as you say, right? It's an inward disposition, like it. Well, just, no, well, the, the... well, yes, yes. Well, speak of chastity, but I'm speaking of meekness in this sense because Superman. That's one of the that's a that's a common arc theme in regards to Superman knowing how much damage he can do, but he doesn't. You don't know how much I hold back, mm-hmm. right? And even his even when he dresses up as Clark Kent, that's him holding back, mm-hmm. like, right? So so that's that example of meekness, and of course, Christ is the Christ is the ultimate example of meekness mm-hmm. because the one who could dis- <laughs> the one who could do anything chose to be crucified. Yes, this is a this is a very that puts a completely different spin on ah, but what's important here is the, is the freedom to choose, right? Mm-hmm. So if it's like this is the issue, it's not the issue is not the burqa, right? right? The issue is not the burqa. The issue is that the women can't choose whether or not to wear the burqa, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. if they can't choose, I mean, if they can't choose, is it really modesty? Like if, no, if it's no, if it's, no, it's not the, because it's, a, not being, yeah. it's not it's not being it's not being engaged and wielded it, it's it's tyranny it's being imposed upon right so you have to have the capability you have to be allowed the capability to to not observe whatever yeah I mean I'll tell you is. a story I'll tell you yes, a story please. I'm sure she won't mind me telling her because it, it's whatever like who will know right so I know a nun um who she was sharing with me kind of like her life story and she's saying about how um she was in this period of time where she was living in the convent um and she wasn't even really orthodox yet it's that's a whole nother story right but um but she's you know trying her best to honor you know she's thankful for this opportunity to be there all this stuff whatever point is part of her just kind of like well let me i'm gonna live here and be with these women and i want to honor them like i just kind of i need to kind of do what they do a little bit so she began to wear a head cover and she's like oh you know like okay kind of weird whatever but she she's telling me how she began to feel so powerful wearing this head cover and she began to wear the head covering not just when she was in the convent and not just when she was in, in in the temple she began to wear the head covering out in public and she began to say how like she'd wear the head covering and she'd like become invisible and not invisible like I'm the cheapest girl nobody likes but invisible like a superhero because she's like you know I was living in this area and in, in this, uh, this this area in Northern California and I was getting these I get cat called and all this stuff and it's like all that stopped when I stopped wearing when I started wearing a head cover. And she's like, she was saying how like she felt so powerful and she felt just free and all these things, right? That's, she engaged it. Like that was a willing thing and, and it, yeah. and the willingness she began to experience it. And then it's just like, well, now she's a nun and she's, you know, obviously, you know, rolling around all day, every day, you know, um, in her habit. So it's like this experience um, of, of engaging modesty freely it's it, it is paradoxical to the contemporary mind 
but I would just say once so there's so many I mean my parish is full of women who have have had some level of that same experience you know what I mean so it's it, it's, it's also really I think that it's to me it I it's so powerful to see it happen in like the monastics like the nuns I think that it I don't know how to put it into words but just seeing them in there what are is it the habit mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, perfect, yeah, and chanting yeah. it is like next level yeah it really is it, it wouldn't be the same if they were all still lay people you know it's kind of funny this is a nice little segue um before i came over here because of the car accident all that stuff whatever i was actually watching this um randomly the algorithm i don't know must have been listening in on my on my conversations but it gave me some some rando local channel seven news um expose this guy did on like on, on nuns dying out you know what i mean it was like there's only going to be so many so many nuns left um in america in fact you know as it pulls up it's just because the headline was really great it was like um what is it? Uh, America is losing its nuns. ABC News, right? <laughs> yeah, just like what the? But like, what kind of nuns are they talking about? Because... Well, they were talking about this is from one day ago. One hundred forty-three thousand views, by the way. Um, it like just Roman Catholic nuns, right? Okay. And which is that's kind of my point. Which is, um, it it you watch, man. Let me send this to you. Real quick, so maybe you can pull us up because I think this will be. Um, yes, yeah, send, send it. I'll pull it up. There's a portion in this where it's so powerful. I mean, and for me, being a spiritual father to the nuns, it's just like it, it was like I was like next level. Um, but and so basically, this um, expose. It's talking about um, there's this whole like dip in vocations. And I've saying, got it. You got, I've got it? it, Father. Okay. Yep. One second. So it, it, it's, it's really interesting because it what only takes something? just a couple minutes of the clip. I'll, I can't, I'm going to prove a point to you guys about something. What? It's, it, I don't know. It's just. Some people are gonna be like, whatever, you're crazy. That's fine. I am crazy, but uh, <laughs> you know. Okay. I, okay, there, oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll pull it up right here. Uh no, you guys keep talking. It'll, well, it'll pop onto the screen. You'll see. Oh, I was gonna ask about because we uh, this is a bit of a segue into something else that I've been curious about, but when it comes to the head coverings in particular and where Paul talks about it's because of the angels. Uh huh. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, I obviously do. you know what I'm talking about. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, so, um, like what the heck does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. That gets us into this whole thing with, um, the, the glory and the wonder of woman. And yes. The glory, the glory and the wonder of woman is so profound that the sons of the sons of God fell and 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 sought to make wives of them right this is the nephilim this is the nephilim yeah 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 so like there's a whole thing and i know someone's like there's gonna yeah, i'm not looking to have a sword fight with someone in regards of like the way that they want to give us a kind of you know very astringent academic which like who knows the sources like this is what it is but uh when you when you understand that this tradition of um, aim the sons of God falling with with females with human females, right? Um, it's a thing, and that's that's what is being kind of like inferred here. Um, and I think okay. it's really I think it's really I think it's really important to to say this because you know um, who is the queen of the angels. The mother of God. The Theotokos. Mother of God. 
and who is the most modest? Who is the most, like, right? who is oh, the, yes. like, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so this, this, this points us to, this is one of the reasons why, um, you know, the, the, the noetic tradition and the, the spiritual experience and, and to be frank, the spiritual understanding of things should always trump um, an academic understanding. Because, the, because when you begin to see that what we're dealing with isn't just kind of like um, arbitrary um, definitions and associations, but rather like lived experiences, then you begin to see that um, the reality that the saints experienced, not just like when they're saints, but as they were kids, like it didn't, it didn't, like St. Baez is all the saints, it didn't just like, okay, now I, I cross some threshold and now I'm holy and I, and I have all these kind of like holy powers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. their whole life is, is about being immersed in, in, the, in the, the, the kingdom of God, right? There, there is no like material world, spiritual world for them, which also includes their experience with the mother God and with the angels and this and and knowing how to encounter holiness and holy things. And the the head covering is is just like a kind of example of par excellence about that. And people want to kind of project our own issues on that, but you know, there's a profound mystery in that the angels are in we can go like so many examples of the angels, the saints and people having uh stories of of the angels and numerous angels and saints being in the temple and the liturgy with us right mm -hmm, and so we should we should take mind that like they see right and they right. and 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 they bear witness anyways your mind for the dwindling group of america's nuns it's a major issue simply put there aren't enough of them and they're having a hard time convincing younger women to take their vows what does this mean for the future of the sisterhood our senior national correspondent steve osinsami has this in-depth report so see this a little bit okay you see these like those are nuns i guess right 32 year old colleen o'toole is making an agreement with her god in a moment that's becoming more and more unusual for a young woman in America, she's becoming a nun. The story I have for you today is called a big moon cake for little star. But Sister Colleen now, is a long time away from the cloistered nuns now in the sunset. Look at that. Look at that. That are closing left and right. Look at that. She has subscribers to her videos on okay, YouTube. Okay, you can stop it. Look My at that. That contrast you look at that and it's like psh, i'm not even a woman and i want to be a nun like yeah like that's... <laughs> you're, you're muted cyprian power i said what extreme power 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 it's power, power. look at that yeah. like like our nuns like it's different but like look at that yeah. And then, and then you go back and you look at, you know, if you just scroll forward a little bit, like just, just pick a like a three quarters in, Cyprian, just like three quarters in, just like where, like for, like forward, like like oh, way okay, in, like toward the end, like toward the end, like towards the end of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the video. Yeah, like right there, for sure, right there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like this is the nuns. Yeah. Now. Like this you know what I mean? Wait, now? those are those are nuns? The nuns now. Right? No, those are like, why? They, like they gave up. They stopped wearing habits. No. Um, so what's the point? Right. That's what I was. What's the, I don't understand. What's the point? So so see this right here. Oh, that's great. Though these are nuns. Go back to that thing now. Go back to the yeah. power. Go back to the power. Yeah, I will. I'll I'll even just play it. So so this is her in as a why? nun. Yeah. Right here. These okay, are what so nuns look like now. Go to there. The what Roman Catholic nuns, nuns look like now. Now in the sunset of their lives, in convents that are closed. Yo, that's like an right army. America. That's she has. That's like an army. That's yeah. It is like an army. Yeah, you see that power. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory, modesty. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you see. Yeah. You see that's yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I I did not know that there that you could be a Catholic nun and not wear a habit. Actually, it's harder now for you to be a Catholic nun and wear a habit. Why? I don't understand what's the because they in Vatican II, just like everything else, they wanted to modernize and make it goofy. And now it's like like nuns that wear habits are like, as I understand it, not only like the minority, like it's a hard, they have a hard time. You know I mean? It's like they've cast off the their yep. office. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. The authority. The authority yeah. comes from because it's a representation of tradition. Mm -hmm. Like it's a. It's a. It's telling a story. There's. there's it's a, a through sim, line a too. There. Yeah. It's a through line. Exactly. It's a through line to like the centuries and centuries. That's right. That's right. And to the mother of God. Because I was, just about, say, yep. I was yep. just about to say yep. the emulation of yep. the mother of God, but like yep. nobody else, you know. Yep. That's it. That's it. So well, uh, no wonder, no wonder America yeah. is losing its nuns. Yeah. Like, why would because anyone want why would you? What am I what am I even doing? I don't understand. What what is it? What is it that I'm doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that footage is so powerful. You look at that, you're like, man, that's you know but father it goes exactly to the and again this is the ex i feel like this is just the beautiful example of experience right where you brought up the fact of the the sister who is now a nun that she was living in the convent but not even orthodox mm -hmm. and then when she put on mm -hmm. you know the That's put right. on the symbol That's and right. became a, at least a beginning of an icon the sketch right. of an icon that that's then right. all of a sudden she actually was transformed by it. That's right. And that's how it works, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. That's why what happened when, when we've talked about this before, which maybe, I mean, that, that becomes the whole thing of, of like understanding, which I actually had a good conversation actually with Esther's husband about like, I'm like realizing that like, um, there's a lot of things we, we, we should probably like start going back and drilling down on that we just mm -hmm. end up riffing on because this whole materialist thing, I don't think people really understand what happened. Like this materialist perspective has been baked and baked in and underlining the, 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 the movements and people's experience of church for mm -hmm. a long time. But in 2020, it was like, and there was a blessing because it, it exposed it. And it's like, okay, pow, like, start choosing, start choosing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is, this is really important to understand because all these, these modernist and, and, and kind of like liberal movements in the church, they all do this kind of neutering. It's all about a neutering of, of what's been revealed and given to us in the tradition to allow us to remove the dichotomies, to allow us to actually be truly empowered. Right. So it's like, you know, I, I get it, whatever, but I'm just saying like, women like, oh, I don't have to wear a head covering. That's just like a cultural thing, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, is it? Well, is can it? I, can I just, yeah. it's not always, if, if I may, it's not always like, I don't want to do that. That's like cultural. It's more like, I forgot today. Uh, it's fine. Okay. Now, and then now, now yeah. but let's go back. Let, let's go back to, you know, uh you know like 2018 to you know like let's go let's go back and like see where it's like you know there there's a real and 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 that's just like in our parish I'm, like there's other parishes where it's just like it's the norm to not that's like, what I, well, what I wanted to say was that like at the time that I wasn't mm -hmm. it was becoming a bit more like that mm -hmm. at the time Mm -hmm. and I was kind of well I don't want to get into all that but it wasn't just I don't want to because I don't want to because I don't like to mm -hmm. you know what I mean there was mm -hmm. a collectivism there mm -hmm. but at the same time I do actually not to go in a totally different direction but like I am deeply aware of a woman coming into our parish who is mm -hmm. not familiar with all of that mm -hmm. and Which I there, this is, I really do want to be like. See, I am too, though. See, this is, this is, this is. See, I almost didn't knowing somebody's going to be visiting. And then I'm like, no, 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 I can't do that. Well, but I do want to be like, 
But wait, no, it's not like that. <laughs> well, it's, it's just it's just funny to me because I almost want to like make you go there a little bit to talk okay. about to talk about the repentance. To be frank, because okay. like because okay. what it, because because what had happened is like I I have, as you know directly I have, I have faced this like it, yes. this isn't an abstract concept. Well, okay, so right? it was. Let me just let me let me yeah. let me lay it out right. This yeah. is an abstract concept because um, as I began to try to help our parish yeah to embrace tradition yeah. yes not just to be because like everyone like who am i gonna fool no one's gonna think i'm like serbian you know what i mean like it wasn't about <laughs> why not i don't know what right. you're like, talking well, about Mon oh, montenegro maybe but like <laughs> <laughs> like the point being is like it, it it was because of of my experience and my wife's experience of like no that like this is what happens anyways the point i'm trying to get at is so so what happens there's like a there's a correlation okay father wants us to wear like head coverings like ugh chauvinist blah 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 no, all this stuff that's, that's what well, i'm saying that's stuff, not what right? though maybe not for you right but there but there were individuals. i can speak for myself but i just i know you're mean i know you're right mean. and so the reason yeah. why i'm saying that is because yeah. it could be further from the truth because even even very recently you know there was there was some newer women that had come and there was a struggle and i wasn't like listen you're right. gonna put this on and you're gonna like it like what like what is that you know because, no. because why because I was like look okay just gently this is what the teaching is this is why you know I'm like you know and I, I just leave it there and then bit by bit thanks be to God you know these women they begin to experience it and then they want to and it isn't right. just about like I want to fit in they begin to experience right. the grace and the blessing that Thank comes you. from being right. in the tradition right well, I also have to say the converse of that is that men cannot cover their heads. And because our culture, you don't wear a hat everywhere anymore. Mm -hmm. That's not, it's not that same, like, oh, I have to show this physical level of respect. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it, you know, if men wore hats everywhere, mm -hmm. they would still have that, like, okay, in this space, I don't wear a hat. So I do feel like it's a bit more of a burden on women, <laughs> which yeah, I see, guess that's the. But yeah, but but I would say that's the that's not correct in the in the regards of seeing it because it's a blessing. Like I'm right. like right. I'm not burdened right. by wearing the cassock. It's well, it's like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, you know what I mean? And like it's the right. same absolutely. thing like, with the nuns. Absolutely. When you see the nuns transition out of being postulants and they're actually finally oh, like, it's like nuns, it was like oh, it's... you could like. It the is the grace you felt like everyone is, felt the it grace. It is like right? we have our, I don't know. It's like all the, all the words I have are from like fantasy. So I don't want to use them, but it's like we do. We have like our magical wizards. That yeah. Are just like, yeah. It's yeah. a thing. And, and that's why it's like St. Paisius. He'll talk about like, you know, these these priests who are just like, whatever. It's like, like a disdain for the cassock because there's modernists and who will be like, oh, cassocks. And like they want to look like, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's the thing of it's just like St. Paisius is like, what blessing is there? Yeah. What what blessing is there? Like, like, yeah. like, like, yeah. I don't need a blessing from Jimmy, Jimmy Bob. You know what I mean? You don't no. you need, right? No. The blessing yeah. comes from the priesthood, which is manifested and experienced right. through that manifestation, which is the cassock. And people go like, Absolutely. oh, like, see, there's that magical thinking, but it's not. What it is is it, it's incarnational. It's <laughs> incarnational we experience the grace of God through sacraments, right? And these sacramentals, holy oil, vestments, like all of these things communicate the, the, the grace of God to us, right? Yeah. But, in, but unless you begin to like full circle back, unless you actually begin to experience these things, right? Through obedience, right. through jumping in, it's like whatever to you, you know what I mean? Right. It, it, doesn't, right. it doesn't register. I mean, I, th I think... Entering into a ceremonial, a ritual ceremonial space, it really is, I think, preferable to be able to have some, to be able to have some change in your, your being that Absolutely. signifies to you, yes. right? Yes. So, and usually yes. that would be garb of some, yes. some sort, right? Yes. So, but I mean, even in the Western Christian tradi tradition, it would be like your Sunday suit or a yeah. church dress yeah. or a church hat or you know what i mean like 
these are, these are things. It, where, yeah, everybody knows yeah. it except for the evangelicals. Yes, because even right. old tiny Protestants, and like you know, this is what's so funny is the lowest common denominator is ruling, because the 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 missionary Baptists, like the Episcopalians. I mean, I don't know. Like everyone is going this low road common denominator, which is emulating the world. Evangelical. Like, yeah, I'm gonna wear shorts and whatever. And it's like, and it's like, hey, and, and, and here's the thing, I'm saying this, but even like, even in my parish here, it's like, you know, I don't come out and like scold and shame a dude who's wearing shorts in the parish. I'll, I'll find the right time to be like, hey, you know what, you know, and try to encourage them in that. It's mm -hmm. just like anything else. It's like, it's a pastoral thing, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that I'm not acknowledging like the reality because I want them to enter into that willingly. Because so, if I come in, I'm like, hey, man, you wearing shorts and doing this and that, that's not how we do it here. That's not going to actually get him to that place of experiencing the grace. Right. I may be able to shame him into, in, into behavior and, and like, okay, I don't have to look at his legs, whatever. And now people will know that we do it right here. But that doesn't get him to that place where he's actually engaging freely that that reality of modesty and that reality of, of honor and respect are you are, are you seeing what i'm saying it's, right? it's like the it's like it being mandatory by law for a woman to wear a burqa right it's not it's, 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 that that's not virtue that, that's not virtue that's not virtue that's why for the women i don't like if you're a woman i'm not like oh head covering it's like okay blah 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 you know gently whatever because once you just begin to enter into it i don't need to do anymore Right? Because it's not me, because it isn't just, it, it, right. there's, there's a spiritual right. principle right. at play. Right. Right. Absolutely. And, and what we're dealing with now, right, is, you know, unfortunately, there's segments of the quote unquote orthodox world in America that are being tempted with these capitulations to a worldly Protestantism, right? Which, which is essentially this rationalist, materialist perspective. That's why they don't have sacraments because they're rationalist materialists, right? Because, because God is reduced to a moral system by which you can now, you know, enter into a, 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 a sense of like, you know, superiority, but it has nothing really to do with, with engaging the divine or the transcendent for that matter. Mm -hmm. But see, they don't get it. Everyone else does. Cause I'll tell you what, right now, if we wanted to have, you know, a wild time, let's, let's, let's wait a couple weeks and let's go get invited to a certain um, area of town and let's go, you know, a certain phase of the moon. I guarantee you, we go into a certain rituals, they're going to be wearing something. There's going to be, mm, there's going to be. Exactly. Elements. That's what's so crazy. Yeah. There's going to be elements there. There's yeah. going to be ceremonial daggers. There's going to be all kinds of stuff that's happening, right? Everyone else gets it except the, except the evangelicals, right? Yeah. The materialist, yeah. like, duh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Duh. But speaking of evangelicals who are coming into a parish for the first time, mm -hmm. how do, uh, yeah. <laughs> how do I be like, yo, it's not because it's like women are shameful. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, I do struggle. I grapple with that. Um, it's always at the forefront of my mind how hard it is to come into that space for the first time. It's extremely intimidating. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I, I, mean? would, I would tell people first of all. I would say, depending on, I say, look, you know, um, like if I was, you know, uh, the women in our parish, you know, they cover their heads. Um, you're not. You know, no one's forcing you to do that, but I think you'll be more comfortable because number one, you won't stick out, right? But number two, just to give an understanding, the the cover women covering their heads has everything to do with with a, an honor and respect and an awareness of the preciousness of women, mm -hmm. right? And the women cover their heads because they're precious. And then you give them the whole thing of like in our church, we 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 veils are put over precious things. A bride has a veil. Why, right? <laughs> like. The bride and the veil, the lifting of the veil has everything to do with her virtue, with like how precious she is, how exclusive that is, right? Oh, this is these are all these symbols, you know. But do what you want. And then and then from there, once you say that to them, then they can kind of enter in and then I mean, does it go hand in hand with like men also aren't supposed, you know, like uh, like like what are like the kind of the basic low bar 
parameters. Oh, that's very that's very good for dress. You know I mean? Yeah, that that yeah, would, it would like, be good to just lay that out. Let's just like like sure. if we want to be, you so, know, so, because so just, so there's some parishes and it's like no, but nothing above the wrists for yeah. any. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, ours is still pretty moderate when it comes to this. Yeah, there are parishes that are a lot more conservative. Yeah, with yeah. dress. So, yeah, so I would say, like medium bar, right? And it it depends on what jurisdiction and what church, but like just to play it safe, you know, um, men wear pants, and um, at the very least, a plain uh, t-shirt with no like printing on it maybe a polo, you know, or a short sleeve button shirt or a long sleeve button shirt, just to keep it safe, right? Just so, because right. you never know the exact temperature, that that's fine, right? Um, and then like women, you know, like definitely like, um, it's gonna depend because, you know, at the very, very, very least, you know, like, like some kind of like pants or slacks, I guess, but like really like, you know, dress, really um and then you know uh a, a modest shirt that covers the shoulders you know um not too much you know like no real cleavage hanging out or anything like that and and a head covering like that that's pretty standard but if you go to certain churches like greek churches like uh, you can wear a mini skirt and show up in like high heels and, and right it teased hair like it, it just it, it is it, it a little bit cultural in that way it's cultural in the sense of the absence of culture. It's cultural in the sense that they've thrown off their culture for the pursuit of like a, a hyper stereo, like a, a hyper caricature of American culture, if that makes sense. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, because that's like the modern Greek parishes, like where they're like that. Sure. Like that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I'll just say like most Russian churches, right? Bring a head covering, wear a skirt. Right. You're, you're, you'll be good. If, we, it's, if, my, it's, if it's if it's if it's a Slavic church, Russian, Serbian, Romanian, whatever, bring a head covering, wear a skirt, you'll be fine. Right. right? Even right. even if they're more modern, no one's gonna look at you like ugh, whatever. Right. right? You'll be right. you'll be covered. Well, because my my husband, we were out of town and we ended up visiting a parish, and mm -hmm. we last minute decided to visit this parish, and so we didn't we hadn't brought any church clothes, so I like fully like went to Old Davy to get like church clothes for my whole family mm -hmm. and yeah. then we showed up and we're like oh these people are a lot more casual than we are in our parish yeah. so i felt kind of like i mean i'm really glad that we did the respectful thing because isn't it better that way than to be oh 100 like, it's always better uh, to be over way than better under. and i would just absolutely say, it's always better to be over than under and the other thing is to whenever you go to a monastery like wrist you know down oh, okay wrist. that was my gonna be my other question yeah. like so covered in the sure. wrist head covering down to the wrist and and like and like long skirt you know um yeah and so yeah mm -hmm. standard i think we're at almost two hours are we oh gosh wow maybe yeah, yeah. i think you're right yeah that's great well that was great <laughs> um i have a question it is getting late. That kind of ties into the, our opening question. All right. And we're all parents. So what were you most excited when you knew that you were going to be a parent when your kids are getting older? And it's like, oh, I can start. We can start getting into like the good stuff here. Like what is the thing that you're most excited? What What's the thing that you were most excited to share with your kid? And I can go first. Because okay. I finally, I finally convinced my husband that our older kids, I've got a six and an eight year old. I finally convinced him that they were old enough to watch Jurassic Park. Mm. And we watched Jurassic Park with them and they were terrified and it was so much fun. So, <laughs> there's tons that I want to share with them, but like I was, I've been working on for like two years. Like, can we please just watch, like they're ready. They're fine. They're going to be fine. And we watched Jurassic Park. That's good. And they were terrified. That's good. It was great. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Cyprian, you know you. Uh, I can. Yeah, I. I mean, I know. I know what this one is, and it's it's relatively recent. Um, okay. So I played beach volleyball 
for many years when I was living in California competitively, I was like ranked and rated with play tournaments all the time. And one of the cool things about beach volleyball of, of all this, I guess there's other sports that are like this, like tennis, golf, maybe there's some few tennis and beach volleyball really stand out to me where, um, the women can play with men. Like oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. At, a, at a, at a pretty high level, like high level women and high level yeah. men can play together competitively. Um, and so I have two daughters okay. and it was one of the things knowing that I was having daughters where I was like, cause I think most guys are like, oh, I want to go out and like throw a baseball with my son and do all, right. all of that. It's a little bit different when it's men and women, right? The, the caliber's not quite the same. But, but if you're like a tennis player, you're like, oh, I've got a daughter. Great. Fantastic. Like, we're going to go out. We're going to play all the time. But um, beach volleyball. And I was wondering when would be the time. And uh, we had these Pacific mini games here in Saipan where I live. And, there, you know, we had the international players all come. And my uh, six-year-old. Okay. Like the women's volleyball, which is always actually a bigger spectator draw usually than men's volleyball, even in the Olympics. Uh, she just fell in love with a couple of these teams and was like going and hanging out with them and the whole nine. And they really took to her and they were so okay. sweet and everything. And she was like, I want to play volleyball. And the, the coach of the NMI team here of the, of the team in Saipan was like, I've got some kids balls at home. And he brought them actually when, when we were watching. And so she's uh, so we're starting in on that. She still is maybe a little young, How but tall is already she? the, Oh, she's tall for, she's six. Okay. She's tall for a six-year-old, okay. Okay. but, but still it takes a little coordination and some power to get it over the net. But, um, but we're starting and she's still excited about it. So, and we live in a place that's like beach volleyball. This is the spot. So um, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. Like I'm that's pretty excited great. about that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I was actually kind of really trying to rack my brain about this one. Cause there's like, there's a lot there, but I think really because of having both boys and girls, you know, and I'm trying to think, what's that thing that's been across the board, you know? Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Kate Bush. Okay. I love it. That's great. <laughs> I have to say, I've been so into Kate Bush and it's totally because of Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, oh, there you go. I mean, you're, you're, you, you I, just showed, you showed your age I, or maybe oh, we show, or maybe oh, we showed oh, ours. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I'll What's tell you funny? That, like, apparently, apparently, um, I think, well, my 20 year old came to like, I was speaking to like, I think it was my 15 year old, eight year old, maybe it was mom, but it was like, and like, I guess he was kind of like serious. He's like, he's like, Sorry, Esther, but he's like, it's just like, he was saying something like, it's so lame, all these people liking Kate Bush now because of Stranger Things. Oh, like, right. He's, he's okay. like, I was way, I've, I've been into her since Oh, he's, he you know was there I mean? before me, right? No, he was, he was into it before I was yeah. there. Yeah, but I was like, oh, that's the, that, that did me good hearing that because it's like, yeah, I mean, like, he, it's like. He's raised on it. It's, Kate Bush is kind of like this, because she's this constant in our, in our house, like. Love it. Since they were like kids, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, I love that. Love it. I'm definitely one of those people, but my eight month old, actually my baby, she loves Kate Bush. Of course she does. Well, of course she does. Of course she does. <laughs> it's good. It's just good. We've talked about this before that it's like yeah. Kate Bush is just good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Like yeah. just good. And I, I love, cause it's interesting father. We had had a conversation about this idea of things being like just good. Mm -hmm. And it did not. And it's funny because Kate Bush came up in that. And this was before the on this show. Yeah. Right. So we've got <laughs> receipts. Things. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. We've talked oh. about Kate Bush on this long show. Before. Long before. Right. Long before the Stranger Things thing. Right. Before anybody was even born. Right. <laughs> Nobody was even born. <laughs> 40 weeks ago. Right. <laughs> we started the show. It was even alive. <laughs> and uh, no, but I think it's just it, when that when that situation happened. You know, and it went to number one. It was one of those where it's like, yeah, just goes to show it's just good. If you yeah. just put good things in front of yeah. people, it doesn't matter yeah. how old or how new, yes. it's just yes. good. Yes. True. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, it was great, Esther. We thank you. It's great. Well, thank for yes, you so thank much you. This for is incredible. Me. This was a lot yeah. of fun. Andrew can stay gone for his. Yeah, there you go. Too. <laughs> My husband got four months of family leave. So oh. 
that's how no just <laughs> that's great that's all right great. everybody thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. good night bye, -bye.